Chapter 12 What Happened to the Snowman Everyone stared at the big white bears in horror. No one had thought of the chimney. What a pity they hadn't stopped it up. I'm going to let the magic snowman in, said the first white bear. Then the father bear spoke up in a very sorrowful voice. Cousin, why are we enemies? We have always been good friends up until now. The four white bears looked at him and at the mother bear and baby bear in sudden amazement. They rushed at them with loud, oomphy noises. Joe thought they were going to fight the three bears, and he took up a jug from the table to help his friends. But no, the white bears were not going to fight. They were hugging the three bears as tightly as they could, and to the children's amazement, tears were pouring down their furry faces. We didn't know it was you, said the white bears. Why, cousins, we would never have fought you if only we had known you were there. The three bears we love so much. There, there, said the mother bear, wiping the tears of the white bear off her fur. It's all right, but for goodness sake, tell the other bears we're friends. We don't want the front door battered down. Moonface opened the door and yelled out of it, Bears, it's all right. This is the cottage of your cousins, the three bears. We're friends. But the white bears didn't answer or come. Instead, a big white shape came up and squeezed through the door. The magic snowman. A chill fell over the little room. The white bears were frightened of him, for he was their master. He shut the door and glared at everyone out of his stone eyes. So... Even my own bears have gone over to the enemy, he said. Ho, oh, ho, what will you have to say if I turn you into ice and snow, everyone? Nobody said anything, but to Bessie's surprise, Moonface shut the door and then went to the fire. He piled on three great logs and winked at Bessie. The snowman took up a white bear by the scruff of the neck and shook him. So, you found your voices, did you? he said. Didn't I tell you that you were only to say oomph and not speak a word to anyone? I won't have bears that talk. He picked up another white bear and shook him. So, you are friends with my enemies, are you? he said. The room became very hot. Joe took off his coat. So did the others. Moonface slowly put on another log. The fire crackled and shot great flames up the chimney. Fanny wished she could take off everything she was so hot. Whatever does Moonface think he's doing making the room so hot, she thought crossly. But just as she was about to tell him to put the guard around the fire, he winked at her and she said nothing. Moonface had some queer plan that he was carrying out. The snowman went on and on, grumbling and threatening. Everyone listened and said nothing. Moonface poked the fire and it blazed up higher. Now this is what I'm going to do, said the magic snowman. I'm going to take this nice little cottage for my own and I shall live here. All of you others can live in a snow house and freeze for all I care. You will all wait on me and do whatever I say. Yes, said everybody. They all knew now what Moonface's plan was. He meant to make the room so hot that the magic snowman would melt. Clever old Moonface. A little trickle of water began to run down the snowman's broad white back, which was near the fire. Moonface pointed to it secretly and grinned. Fanny thought Moonface's beaming face looked so funny that she began to giggle. She really couldn't help it. Goldilocks giggled too and stuffed her handkerchief into her small mouth. The baby bear gave a high squeak of a giggle and then wept bitterly because the snowman cuffed him. How dare you laugh, shouted the snowman angrily. Outside, all of you, outside. This is my cottage now and not one of you shall stay here. They all crowded outside except Moonface, who crouched behind a big chair, determined not to leave the fire in case it burnt low. Outside it was bitterly cold. The white bears quickly dug up the snow and made a high wall to shelter the others from the wind. They crouched there, cuddling close to one another for warmth. 
the big white bears wrapped their furry arms around the children and warmed them beautifully. Joe thought they were very kind indeed. They waited and waited. They could see smoke pouring from the chimney of the cottage, and they knew that Moonface must be keeping up the fire. The bears oomphed every now and again, and the children whispered to one another. Then suddenly the door of the cottage was flung open, and Moonface stood there, his big face beaming like a full moon. "'You can come back now,' he shouted. "'It's quite safe.' They all crowded back into the cottage. Joe looked for the snowman, but he was gone. There was nothing to show that he had been there except a very large puddle of water. He melted very quickly, said Moonface. He may have been very magic and very powerful, but he was just made of snow after all, so he melted like a real snowman on a sunny morning. The polar bears oofed with delight. They had hated being servants to the snowman. We'll say goodbye to you now, they said to the three bears. This cottage is cosy, but it's too hot for us. Come and see us again whenever you like. Goodbye. Everyone hugged them goodbye, and Joe felt quite sad to see them go. Moonface shut the door after them. Now we'll get back home, he said. I'm a bit tired of this land. Come on, bears, help me to get the cottage back safely. He didn't do the same magic as before. He drew a circle on the floor in blue chalk, and the three bears stood inside holding paws. Moonface danced around them, singing strings of queer magic words. A wind rose up, and the cottage rocked. Darkness came down, and for a moment, no one could see anything. Then gradually the darkness went and the wind blew no more. The sun shone warmly in at the window. Bessie gave a shout. I say, we're back in the little woody corner where we first saw the cottage and it's daytime now, not night time. Well, we've been having this adventure all night long, said Moonface with a laugh. It's sunrise now. The night has gone. You'd better hurry off home, children, or you'll be scolded for leaving your beds at night. They hugged Goldilocks and shook hands with the three bears. We'll come back and see you sometime, said Fanny. Thank you so much for all your help. Goldilocks and the bears stood at the door and waved goodbye as Moonface hurried the three children away down the lane to catch the train back to the enchanted wood. It wasn't long before they had got to the station, waited for a train, slid off the roof and settled down in a carriage. When they got to the enchanted wood, they said goodbye to Moonface and Fanny gave him a kiss for being such a help. He was so pleased that he went red all over his enormous face and Bessie laughed. You look like the setting sun now, she said. You really ought to be called Sunface. Goodbye and see you soon, I hope, called Moonface. Off went the children home and got into bed just about an hour before their mother called them to get up. My goodness, they were sleepy all that day.